Hi everybody, welcome back to another Sean's World Cottage Renovation video. Now today's video I'm going to be uh, continuing to work on the front door. I'm going to do some pointing on the outside of the stones. Uh, we're going to put in a frame, I've got lots of repairs to do upstairs and who knows whatever else I'm going to find so right let's just get set up and uh, see you in a moment. So here's the plan. We're going to be raking these joints out in these stones here, either side of the doorway. We're then going to fill them up with some lime mortar. That way it will hold them in nice and tight for the later work when we remove that wooden lint or above the doorway. So I'm going to get a mix going. I'm going to mix it up dry and then I'm going to rake out all the joints and then use as much as I need as I go. So that's the plan for today or the start of it. Lots more to do after that, but initially I'd like, because the weather's sort of stopped raining at the moment, um, I'd like to get those joints done so yeah, they can be set in. But before I can do any work on the stones, I need to take this sign down. Now that's given me great amusement over the years. People do pull up and say, "Was did this used to be a restaurant or a hotel? And uh, the answer is no, I bought that from a vid grenier. So I'm going to move it down to the other end of the building. I do like it and uh, yeah it was only about five euros so a real bargain I've had me five euros worth out of that for sure right let's get that down and uh, create a platform so I can safely work here That's that other bit of metal. Ivy is not a good thing, especially if your pointing isn't very good, so get rid of it. There's a time and a place for Ivy, and it's not on old buildings with defective mortar. get every last bit out it grows back it's amazing stuff <laughs> nearly there so that's virtually all of the ivy out you can never be too sure so we'll see only time will tell right my next job is to get rid of all this Effective pointing. Now maybe hand chisel or it might be a drill job so depends on how easy it comes out. Now what I plan to do with these stones is clean them up. The rest of the wall that way is going to be rendered. But what I want to do is rake these joints out, get the lime mortar right in there, secure this stonework. I'm not going to bring the point in right to the finish edge on these stones because I want to do that when I do the render. So you get a consistency with the, uh, with the color and, uh, and the coat. So yeah, we're just going to rake them out, get some nice fresh mortar inside, strengthen this wall up and then uh, once we come to render we'll finish the pointing 
with the render so that it leaves these big nice stones exposed so you know that goes in there all that way that isn't good so we'll get this out I've got to be careful on how much I take out I'm gonna leave it a bit by the timber at the top just concentrate on this area bit by bit remember it's not a race it's a journey So this is as much as I can safely take out at the moment. Take too much out and the stones are loose. Before you know it, down it comes. Well, a small section anyway. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get some lime in there, get that all secured, let it go off before I touch anything else around it. So, right, let's get this mix going. Now what I normally do is get a water bottle, put it on the fine jet and get it right in there. Try not to get it on the face of the stone because when you're pointing it'll, uh, it'll sort of stain the stone. Although you can wire brush it off afterwards. So just in all, the, in all the gaps. And then what I'll probably do with these deep gaps, maybe make like an icing bag, cut the end off plastic, put the uh, lime mortar in there and squeeze it right into there. Put a bit more small stone in there to bind it up this really is a weak spot at the moment so this is where all the damage was on the other side in the barn wall so yeah it's really important that I get this done right but like I say I'm not going to finish it off on the stonework uh, that's going to be done with the render so the render will come over leave these big ones exposed that's why I cleaned them up um, any sort of algae on them I'll, I'll spray them with anti-moose and that'll kill that off but it's, uh, it's dust free and uh, it's all clean, so ready for some water and water. So I'm all happy. So here's what I mean this is for mortar, it goes in there, you have to make sure it's well mixed, and uh, you just twist it and pump it in. Yeah, the, uh, the skill with this is to get the consistency right so you can get it out of that nozzle at the end. If you're any good at making cakes, <laughs> it will come in handy. Alright, let's get that mix going. Oh, it rains. Encouraging. Just simply twist and squeeze. Lovely. <laughs> nice when you get something right. Okay, let's get this filled up.
If you get it too wet, it just pours out. So you have to just get it just right, and I think I've got that. Okay. Well, I did manage to get it right into, sorry flies, right into the joint, so yeah, that's good. It's filled up the voids behind the stones. So now I'll just go along and just point it all up. Get this nice and secure. I do apologize, I got carried away and forgot to record. <laughs> anyway, this is how far I've got so far. I've got another mix to do up the top there. Um, yeah, got it right in there with the pointing trowel. And then just before it goes off, just with a, a paintbrush, just gently smooth all the joints away. Now don't forget, this isn't the finished, finished point in. Um, it's going to be rendered. The only stones that are going to be left on show are the big ones. But I just wanted to get it nice and tight into the joints so it secures this structure. So another mix to go for this side. And uh, yeah, I'm pleased. Pleased that I got this, well, nearly done today. But yeah, I will. Okay, here we go, let's get this top bit done. Now when you use lime for pointing and that and rendering, you'll notice the first application that you use will often crack. That's perfectly normal, it's, it is meant to do that. By the time you go over it with your second one, um, that won't happen again, so yeah, not too worried about the minor cracking in this. But uh, yeah, we'll get this done. It'll look a million dollars. So it's really important that you work it right in, right into the gap, fill it right up, scrape off the excess, and then just before it sets, just go over it with a brush. The main priority now is to get as much as I can in there, get the gap filled up, and like I say, afterwards we'll It'll tidy up and brush it off. But yeah, so just get it in there. You know, the more you play with it, the worse it will be. Just don't be scared, just get it in there. So just to tidy it up, get the paintbrush and just work your way round and then just gently sort of work it in the gaps if there's any. Obviously if you want a, a different effect you, you know you can't use a, a brush but to keep it in keeping this is the effect that I'm going for. But all this will be rendered over but until then just going to use a traditional way. It would also give the render something to key into because it's not dead smooth, it's got like, you know, sort of brush strokes in it. That'll help for it to stick as well. Oh, here comes the rain. Done this in time. Still not got the door on though. Et voila! Well, I'm really pleased I got that done because uh, rest assured that that's nice and strong now. So when we come to take this off, this stone will stay in place. This will come out. I'll put another stone in the place of the timber and then put my lintel on top. Might use this. I'll inspect it once I take it off. So yes, uh, a job well worth doing. Right, let's get onto this door frame now at last. See how it goes. Oh. 
Now it has st just started to rain, so I'm not going to start that side today. Uh, I might rake the joints out from inside. Uh, the little bit of lime uh, mortar I've got mixed up. I will simply keep, just cover it in plastic, I'll put it inside the plastic, and uh, that'd, be, that'd be fine till tomorrow. As long as no air can get to it. That's great. Put that to one side. Yeah, right. Let's start doing the door frame now. Better late than never. Mm. Bloody weather. Don't forget this whole project is powered by the sun and EcoFlow, so no mains electricity used on this project so far. Whew, it's getting warm again. Right, so as I said, I've got a temporary frame in, and it is very temporary. It's not going anywhere though. Um, it's in square, but let me show you why I needed to put in a new door for this, this opening. Now, believe it or not, this temporary door frame is actually in square so you can see how far out the old lintel was now there's no way I could have sort of fitted a door into that so you know partly yep head height if we need extra head height but we need it square as well you know we're going to put in a nice nice new period door in that opening so it needs to be square right I've got that on now I've got to offer the door up uh, might have to pop out and get some Hinges, not quite sure. Let's have a look, see how it fits. Right. I know no, it's not gonna fit exactly, but yeah, that'd be alright. Okay. I'll have to get some uh Look through me hardware store and see whether I've got any hinges. If not, to the bricker. That's heavy. Oh. So don't forget if you want some more footage, behind the scenes, pictures and you know, all what goes on in Sean's world, you can join the Patreon or the Buy Me A Coffee. Equally, you know, just watch the video, it really does help. Thank you everybody for your support. I've had a quick look, I haven't got any hinges, so I've got to go to the Brico, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now, I'll eventually get this door on, bye.